Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the forum at St. Bart's, hosting sacred conversations about the things that matter. I'm joined today, as always, by my colleague, Peter Thompson, vicar here at St. Bart's, as well as Patrick Berkwis, program manager for Episcopal Charities, and David Sanders, program manager for Crossroads Community Ministries, housed right here at St. Bart's. And my name is the Reverend Zach Yane, Senior Associate Rector here at St. Bart's. Patrick and David, thank you uh, both for being here this morning and welcome. Good morning. Hey, thanks so much, Zach and Peter. Really looking for our con- forward to our conversation this morning. And jumping right in, this is Episcopal Charities Sunday here at St. Bart's. Uh, so Patrick, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about what Episcopal Charities is and does, who you are and your role uh, with Episcopal Charities, um, and uh, help familiarize our audience with uh, what's going on. Fantastic. Hey, thanks again, Zach, and everybody for uh, being with us today. Um, I know it's a little different being remote and all, but uh, really grateful uh, that you're all here today. Uh, As Zach said, my name is Patrick Berquist. And I am the Chief Program Officer for Episcopal Charities here in the Diocese of New York. Um, I do want to share one quick connection um, between the work that David does um, and my own connection to St. Bart's. St. Bart's is my parish. Uh, My husband and I were married there. Uh, He sits on the vestry. And um, I actually came to St. Bart's because uh, I was in New York City. And I was looking for a place to serve. And so I searched Midtown Episcopal Service and started volunteering at Crossroads at the food pantry. Um, It was that network of volunteers that when I first moved to the city helped me get an apartment uh, and helped me transition from uh, a time in Arkansas and Kansas and the Midwest to moving to New York. Uh, So I am forever grateful to uh, an incredible group of volunteers and uh, clients at the Thursday Food Pantry of Crossroads Community Services, and because it also brought me to St. Bart's. So, uh, Zach, sorry for that little tangent, but always want to give a shout out uh, to the incredible volunteers there. Um, no no so- worries, Matt. I think that it um, it speaks to, sometimes we talk about kind of a triple Venn diagram at uh Crossroads Ministries of folks who come to Crossroads as guests, those who come as volunteers, and then those who might uh, be part of the church or uh, sit on the board or be part of the staff. And sometimes we find uh, ourselves in uh, multiple intersect- intersecting circles um, at various times in life. And um, sometimes we find as volunteers or workers that Crossroads really ministers to us as much as we might minister to uh, those who come in need as guests. So thanks for that context. Well, absolutely. And that's, it's, it's been interesting to be uh, with Crossroads at those different points in the Venn diagram, right? Uh, so came to St. Bart's as a volunteer through the work of Crossroads. Then when I was on staff working with Children, Youth and Family, and then uh, with Bishop Wolf, um, kind of doing the support side of it from the parish. And now at Episcopal Charities, um, I'm a grantor, I'm a funder um, and supporter of Crossroads Community Services. So it's, it's been an interesting place to be able to see it from so many different places um, and to be such a fan and supporter of it. And, and so to tell you, Episcopal Charities, who are we? What do we do? Uh, we're 25 years old. We were started here in the Episcopal Diocese of New York 25 years ago as a way of supporting community-based outreach and support programs across the diocese. So last year, we actually gave out about a million dollars in cash grants to parishes all across the diocese. So we make sure there's about 500 kids have a place to go after school for after school programs. We support about 60 food access programs, just like Crossroads all across the diocese. So we work in rural communities up in Ulster County, and we work in urban places like the South Bronx or in Midtown Manhattan. Um, We are a network that brings these kind of outreach programs together and gives them funding and cash is crazy important in the work that we do. But we also create a network 
um, and we provide a community um, and we provide resources that are beyond the financial resources. Um, and so my role as chief program officer is, um, I would say I have the better job in Episcopal Charities. I don't have to raise any money. I just have to spend it like crazy. Um, and so we did about a million dollars in just straight cash grants last year and another three and a, or 350,000 in what we're calling food grants, which I'm happy to talk about a little bit later. Um, we'll do another 500,000 of that this year. So it'll be about 1.5 million this year in what we'll be able to grant to these grassroots Episcopal kind of community-based organizations. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for that primer, Patrick. And of course, we really have two uh, organizations represented on this call. There's Crossroad, there's a uh, Episcopal Charities, which you represent. And then David is here representing uh, Crossroads Community Services. David, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what Crossroads is uh, and how it is related to Episcopal Charities, how it benefits, but also how it's uh, different. Oh, good morning. Thanks for having me. So um, Crossroads, we are a an independent 501c3. We, and our mission is uh, we are um, dedicated to the fight to end hunger, hunger and uh, homelessness. Uh, we do this through our various programs, uh, one of them being the pantry, which Patrick so beautifully uh, expressed his thoughts about. Um, we also have a breakfast program, which feeds guests uh, three days a week. We have a Saturday brunch program, which feeds people on every Saturday. And we work in conjunction with Coalition for the Homeless. Uh, and Coalition for Homeless supplies dinner uh, 365 days a year. Every night. Um, <clears throat> some of you watching may see the lines every evening at 5.30. That's Coalition for the Homeless. And they partner with us. Uh, we, have, we are their home base. And we work hand in hand. Um, Crossroads, I have been volunteering there. I had been volunteering there for eight years. I've been the pantry manager since like 2018. Um, and I was a volunteer when I first started as, a, as the manager. And now I am I'm staff. I'm program manager. Therefore, I oversee the pantry. I oversee our breakfast programs and other various uh, operational <clears throat> jobs. Um, working with Jesse Ramos, our executive director, and Martha Avery, our administrator, and Leon Guy, uh, our facilities manager. We are the four staff of Crossroads. Um, to start, I'd like to thank you again, Patrick, for the, such kind words. And I have to say, what Episcopal Charities does for us. I can't express uh, enough how much their support has helped us. Um, you said we did $1 million last year. We got a chunk of that. <laughs> and it helps us in ways you, I don't think you fully understand. It helps us uh, provide healthy choices for our pantry guests who shop for the groceries. It helps us provide healthy choices for our breakfast meal guests who come three days a week to receive breakfast. Um, without Episcopal Charities support, uh, I'm not sure how we would uh, get by. Um, but thank you, uh, Episcopal Charities. It's, I think I do all the ordering and I do all I, all the maintenance of the inventory and every week i'm reminded like oh there's the charities there's there's the money thank you so much um i like to say that while money is extremely important we couldn't get by without it uh we also like to emphasize the sense of community uh, numbers and money really do matter but also community affairs. And we wouldn't survive without our hundreds of supremely dedicated and super, just amazing volunteers. Uh, like I said, we have a staff of four, but we have a cavalcade of about 200 volunteers that make this everything run. Um, and they are 
just stellar people from all over the city, from all walks of life. Some are members of St. Bart's, uh, many aren't. Um, and without them, we would not survive. We would just we adore physical charities and we adore our volunteers and we couldn't get by without either of them. Um, what else can I tell you? Well, David, you spoke about the folks really lining up around St. Bart's building. Uh, during mm -hmm. the week. And folks who only come to worship services on Sundays uh, may not ever see that. And uh, I imagine that a lot of folks don't associate a church right here at Park Avenue and 50th Street as uh, encountering a great deal of need. Uh, but sadly, that's not the case. And I'm, I'm wondering if you could um, tell us, give us a, uh, some insight into how many guests does uh, Crossroads uh, see and serve uh, week in and week out on average? Um, well, the okay, our breakfast program, we are averaging uh, between 130 and 160 guests uh, every morning for our breakfast program. It's for an hour where we feed people who wait online. Uh, our pantry, we are feeding, um, we're averaging between four, four and 450, uh, actually feeding our, our guests who come for groceries uh, every week. That's once a week at the pantry. Um, the breakfast line we see in the morning is primarily all adults, many of whom have employment. Uh, some, some don't. They come from mostly Manhattan. Um, and what they're experiencing is food insecurity uh, and hunger, which we can go into a little bit later. Uh, our pantry guests uh, come from every borough in Manhattan uh, every Thursday. So we serve, we provide groceries for guests who come from Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx. They travel several miles and come to us for groceries. We provide what is uh, three days worth of three meals a day for every person in their family. So the food we give at the pantry, it, it isn't three days of food for their family. And then um, within the network of New York City, there are hundreds of other pantries and they find other ways to supplement uh, how they feed their families. Hey, can I shout out how great Crossroads is on this and tell you like what that impact actually looks like in meals? Like, so they are, Crossroads is putting out like just based off of kind of averages that go through. Uh, and tell me if I'm right on this, David, like you guys are putting out close to 13,000 meals so if you if you do I'm that four twenty if you do that four fifty is it four fifty people coming through is that an unduplicated number or? no no that's that's a number with like a hundred say one hundred thirty families right. come through that day and some of them have three people in the family some have one yeah. some have eight some have eight so I'm looking at the number right now and I can tell you uh, in July we put out yeah almost sixteen thousand meals the pantry alone. Um, and that's in 2022, that's this year. Uh, in 2019, we put out just over 8,000. So we've almost doubled what we what we were doing pre-pandemic. Um, and again, we wouldn't be able to do so without the charity. Amazing that over the course of the week, you really rival Jesus's feeding of the four or five thousand men plus uh, women and children. Indeed, and what it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, David, but folks uh, coming from all five boroughs uh, are really following the food in many ways. Um, and so, what that tells me is that Crossroads and Episcopal Charities are in fact not in competition, but really in a vast yeah. network across New York. Um, and collaborating. Uh, my guess is that folks who come to Crossroads on days that we're serving go to other uh, Episcopal Charities beneficiaries on days that we're not serving here at Crossroads. Probably. Um, 
And so for folks who may be conflicted about, uh, should I give all my donation to uh, Crossroads or all of it to Episcopal Charities or split it up? Um, the, the need is great everywhere. And uh, in, in many cases, um, it's, all ser it's serving similar folks who are um, showing up in multiple locations throughout the week. That's true. Oh, go on, Patrick. Go for it, David. Go for it. Um, if people are looking for ways to give, um, yeah, uh, sh share the wealth uh, if you have it. I think it's smart and magnificent. Um, for us specifically, if someone's interested, uh, the best way to find out what we what could help us most would be to visit our website, which is crossroadsnyc.org. Or simply just give us a call um, at our, our number, uh, or just vote. Uh, you know, we're downstairs in St. Parts. We're there. Call us. Come by. Come by and visit us. Come see what we do. Um, and yeah, and we can definitely use funding because food, as we all know, the food costs are rising daily. Um, a a bag of carrots that I was buying three years ago has gone up by about ten percent in cost, and that's just that's just carrots. Like there are different examples. Uh, so having the funding from organizations like Episcopal Charities keeps us going. Well, and I love Zach. I love the the using the story of the feeding of the 5,000, because so often we have this scarcity mindset, hmm. right? But as we look at the story of the breaking, it was just a few loaves and fishes, right? But when God gets involved in things, right? It's the breaking and the breaking and the multiplying and the multiplying. It's, it's what we celebrate at Eucharist, right? That there's abundance. Um, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, I was up at a food access program in Dutchess County. So Hudson Valley, horse farms, ranches. I don't know what they are. Lots of horses, lots of green, lots of wealth. And I, I walked in this food access program and they were seeing a 200% increase in their numbers, their year over year numbers, 200%. They were overwhelmed by it. So we don't know what to do. Oh dear, I think that uh, Patrick, coffee hour said if someone comes to your coffee hour you know pre-pandemic is there enough food and they're like oh there's always enough food someone comes to the eucharist is there enough bread and wine well of course actually we would never turn anybody away well then in your food access program at the food pantry there is enough like there is enough and you proclaim that there is enough among us all to make sure everybody has something to eat. Um, and so it's moving from that scarcity mindset of like, oh, I have to hold on to mine. And what we see is, you know, when a little boy gives or a little boy or little girl gives their lunch to Jesus, Jesus multiplies and makes sure that there is an abundance left for everybody. So what you will never hear me or anyone at Episcopal Charity say is, oh, we are the true receivers of all financial, like we are the best stewards of it. I will say we are great stewards of it. And we do great work with it. And there is enough. There is abundance. And so our objective is to be good stewards of what we're given, um, is to come alongside a crossroads and and support them in their work at, at Episcopal Charities. The stars of all of the shows that we're a part of, it's never us. It is always people like David who are making sure someone has something to eat. Mm. I just make sure there's money in an account uh, for David to do whatever he needs to do. Um, that's our job. David and people at Crossroads, they're the rock stars um, that we get to, we get the privilege, like the honor of serving with them um, and, and helping to empower the work that they get to do. 
Well, sorry, I, I, I'm a seminary guy too, so I apologize for a little sermonizing <laughs> there. I don't mean to, like, I know I don't have the collar on, but uh, so I hope you all excuse that. It's great, and I think you, uh, I think you froze for just a moment, but just to let our audience know that uh, Patrick is actually joining us from a, a, a visit to the Vatican at the moment from Rome, Italy. Uh, so, uh, fostering a Christian connection, ecumenical connection with our uh, Roman Catholic uh, siblings, which is wonderful. And speaking of that, I, I love this theology of abundance at the heart of all you do um, with Episcopal Charities. And I love this uh, ecclesiology of connection. And I feel like Episcopal Charities is one of the ways that we really lean into the Catholicity, the Catholic nature of the church, little c, because uh, your work puts St. Bart's and Crossroads in connection with really amazing uh, holy work happening across uh, the entire diocese of uh, New York um, in ways that are very tangible. I mean, sometimes it's like we send money to the diocese and like, who knows uh, where it's going or what it's being used for, if we're being honest. But uh, when we uh, support Episcopal Charities, we can see people being fed and clothed and housed um, in real tangible ways that really make a difference in folks' everyday lives. Um, I wonder if you want to say any more about that. And I believe you have a video uh, showcasing uh, just a few of the ways that uh, Episcopal Charities is at work across our city and diocese. Yeah, well, I, I think it's a really great way of of talking about staying connected. So uh, one, one of the things I appreciate about one of the reasons I came to work with Episcopal Charities um, was because they were doing a thing. Um, I used to talk about, you know, I got to do really exceptional work at St. Bart's. Um, but what I was looking for was to do lots of things. And at Episcopal Charities, we get to do and put our hands around and become a part of lots of things. So we are working to make sure we are doing employment, just employment practices for those who are formerly incarcerated. In fact, Episcopal Charities is about to hire two of them right now uh, to be part of some of the programming we're doing. Um, we believe in uh, working in immigration. So we're crossroads um, is using their resources and their passions to be connected to the food insecure and housing insecure in Midtown. Episcopal Charities gets to be a part of that, but we also get to be a part of working with immigrants in the Hudson Valley, or we get to do understand that food access and food insecurity is so different in a rural context than in New York City. And what we get to do is we get to pull all of these things together and have an impact on each one of them. Um, the other thing I like is that all of the, all the funding that we get, um, it doesn't go to my salary. Like all of our operating expenses are covered by our board. So that means every dollar that we raise is buying food for, it's, it's a $15,000 food grant to Crossroads so that they can purchase fresh produce for we, we believe is culturally relevant foods. Um, we think it, so can I do one quick little education piece, Zach? Do you mind if I do Please. one little, like little language thing? Peter, if that's okay with you all. I, so uh, if, if you read in the New York Times or you're watching the news and you, you hear about lines at food banks, and then sometimes they use words of food pantries. And oftentimes we, we use those words interchangeably, but they're not actually. So if you think about a food bank as a hub, they have these giant warehouses full of food from government agencies, from corporate people, from donations, all that kind of stuff. That hub distributes food to food pantries like Crossroads. So when David is ordering food from the food pantry or from the food bank, excuse me, he's able to get access to all of that food, but it's limited. The kinds of food are limited. So we support a program in uh, Washington Heights at Holyrood. Uh, it's right there by the George Washington Bridge. They, can't, they have a large uh, Dominican population that likes plantains. 
David, how often are you able to get plantains through the food bank? Uh, through, oh, through food bank? Never. Yeah. We get them yes. because, of, because of the cash from you. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so that's, that's what we're able to do is to say to a program whose community eats plantains, but the food bank is only giving out bananas. Right? Not really. And thinking that <laughs> bananas are just are, are good for every, if we can get bananas too. That's true, right? Yes. <laughs> but it, what it says is, great, use, what we do is we negotiate uh, discounts with major wholesalers that a small pantry that's only seeing uh, 20 people or 50 people a week and has no staff, they can't negotiate those kind of deals that we can. But if I'm representing 60 plus food access programs, we'll go work a deal. Um, and so it means that Holy Root or Crossroads, when their clients come in and they see plantains, for instance, there's a sense of dignity and knowing that, oh, there's respect. You're not just giving us leftovers. You're not just giving us what you can give us and saying, move along. It goes back to that theology of abundance. And saying, no, you eat plantains. We're not going to make you eat canned whatever. Here's healthy foods. Here's an actual thing that you can peel and not open with a can opener all the time. Right? So it, it kind of goes back to that, that sense of abundance. Um, I guess I do have like a three minute clip. Do you want me to go and show that, Zach, or do you want to keep moving along? Um, I, well, let's go ahead and see it. Um, and then I want to return to that uh, piece about dignity for a few minutes, because I think there's a lot to explore there. But let's go ahead and watch the video and uh, get a sense of Episcopal charities across the diocese. Great. And what I'm going to show you is um, uh, our executive director uh, sharing a story up in uh, Orange County. Oh, and the audio is not. We even tried it. I'm so sorry. Are you all hearing that? Executive or? Director of Episcopal Charities. I'm here today at Grace Church in Middletown, New York, which hosts the Guild of St. Margaret Soup Kitchen. This program is one of the many feeding programs that Episcopal Charities is able to help fund as a result of the support from individuals and parishes around the diocese. For people who are coming to us for meals, the kind of decisions that led them here are, am I gonna pay my rent or am I gonna buy food? Am I gonna go to the doctor or am I gonna go to the grocery store? There are many different reasons that, that people will come, but mainly it's because they need it. I'm Phyllis Gardino, and I'm the director of the Guild of St. Margaret Soup Kitchen, and we are the outreach program for Grace Church Middletown, which is in the Mid-Hudson region. It was founded some 40 odd years ago in a simple response to an obvious need, and it has grown and flourished ever since. I'm the Reverend Victor Sarazen. I'm rector at Grace Episcopal Church in Middletown, New York in Orange County. We are the parish that uh, birthed the Guild of St. Margaret Soup Kitchen. Episcopal Charities obviously helps us in funding, but more important than that, we have been recipients of the bulk buy contract, which during COVID gave us the opportunity to get meats that were not available from our food bank that we couldn't afford to pay for because they were so expensive. It's programs like St. Margaret's and the relationships that we were able to develop with them that enabled Episcopal Charities to respond in the midst of the pandemic in some really unique ways. We were able to help get food through our bulk buy program and through our farm to pantry program into communities that couldn't access it. The farm to pantry program is important here because it gives access to fresh vegetables that people here do not have access to um, and they can carry at home. 
to, to give generously is a way that you empower the whole system to work. It's a way that your faith becomes a project that you live out for the benefit of someone in another end of the diocese you may never meet. But your energy, your gifts, your love brought into the, into the equation changes lives. The Guild of St. Margaret's Soup Kitchen at Grace Church Middletown is a wonderful example of the types of programs that Episcopal Charities supports across the 10 counties of our diocese. We are able to fund vital feeding programs like these because of the generous support of individuals, parishes, and other institutions who value the positive impact of these programs in our communities. Today, I'd like to ask you to join us in this work and to donate to Episcopal Charities. There are several easy ways to give. You can text SUNDAY to 91999 on your smartphone. You can visit our website or you can mail a check to our address. Thank you for helping us transform the lives of those in need. Thanks so much. And as today is Episcopal Charities Sunday here at St. Mark's, if you're worshiping with us in person, there will also be uh, giving envelopes available specifically for Episcopal Charities that you can drop your gift in and place in the offering plates. Um, uh, this uh, this uh, need for food came up again in the video. And David, you made a distinction earlier between food insecurity and hunger. Could you say more about that? <clears throat> Well, hunger is a physical reaction to, it's a discomfort. Um, example, I have not had breakfast yet today, so I, therefore I am hungry. But I am in my home, I have a refrigerator with food in it, and I can go to it and get food. I have money, and I can go out and buy food. Um, Many, many, many people don't have that. They don't have access. They don't have money. They don't have access to healthy choices in their life for food. So they are food insecure, um, whether it be because of uh, employment. We don't know. We don't know what the reasons are, but they are, they are experiencing food insecurity because they don't have access uh, to get food that is healthy for them. Um, does that help? Yeah, and I mean, I imagine that that for so many people, especially who maybe have never been in a situation like that before, can be such a source of shame or embarrassment. And what I love about Crossroads and Episcopal Charities is that both organizations uh, do a lot of thoughtful work around really uh, serving in, uh, in ways that uh, that uh, demonstrate the dignity of every human being, as we say in our baptismal covenant. You know, in non-COVID times, uh, people may not know that the meal, the meal programs, the hot meal programs at, at Crossroads are done kind of restaurant style. Guests come in and sit down and actually choose from a menu and are served rather than being kind of shuttled through, you know, a kind of uh, very uh, institutional serving line or something like that. Um, I'd love to hear more about how how both uh, organizations approach this issue of dignity, um, especially thinking about the, you know the word charity is in the name of fiscal charities. Sometimes that uh, word charity has connotations of a certain kind of transactional uh, relationship. And uh, what what efforts are in place to kind of um, work against? that kind of mode of, of ministry? Well, we at Crossroads, uh, we want to avoid the words uh, us versus them. Uh, we don't want to be an us and a them. Uh, we are a community, therefore we are, we are a we. So yes, we are providing uh, goods and services. But as a whole, we want everyone to feel welcome and respected and we want to make their experience with us an enjoyable one um not just a here you go see you later um at the pantry uh we work very hard to make sure people their guests feel empowered 
Um, we try to give them a sense of autonomy and to treat them, to treat, treat your guests as you would treat a guest in your home. Um, uh, it's really simple. It's a simple uh, thought. It's a simple idea, but uh, it takes a minute to grasp. Um, I, as a volunteer, it took me a while to, to really fully get it. Um, but once I got it, I was like, oh, I get this. I, I understand it. Um, and the best way is to just talk to us. If, you are, if you're really curious about what we do, what we're doing in there, again, we're, here, we're there. Just talk, talk to us, anyone. Uh, we'd love to share stories. Uh, I can tell you to expand on that. Um, but, you know, the pandemic really hit people hard. We all, we all know that. Um, our, incre our increase in guests, it's been uh, almost, I mean, no, no, it's been manageable, it's, but it's been a very, it's quite a challenge. Uh, and we've had many guests come through who have never had to experience going to a food pantry to receive something. Never, they never thought in their wildest dreams they had a great job, they had a great apartment or whatever. And they come to us, and I myself deal with them several times a week on the phone. And people are breaking down in tears on the phone, and they're expressing shame, and they're, they're embarrassed, and they can't believe this has happened to them. And my way of dealing with it is, hey, so, you know, have you seen any good movies? Like, like I just try, I try to make them, like, feel like, well, we're here. You come see us. We're going to make this right for and and try to alleviate the shame and whatever whatever negative feelings they're feeling about it, and let them know that they are they deserve what we have because we have it, and that's what we're here for. And that we welcome them, and it's really that simple. Don't we don't want shame. We don't want you feeling anything negative. We want you to come and be comfortable and have a good time and get your healthy food that we have, we have. Um, and people are just, they're often taken aback. They don't know what to expect. They expect, I don't know what they expect. I really don't know what they expect, but um, they're shocked at the bounty that we have, that our volunteers are so warm and friendly and that they're treated like human beings where many of them just aren't people like human beings throughout their days. Did I answer your question? Absolutely. <laughs> Patrick, and then let's uh, hand it over to Peter for some questions. Yeah, I, I, let me give you an example of what dignity does not look like. Uh, not at St. Bart's, not anywhere close that anybody knows of. I was observing a pantry and a volunteer had a pile of apples on the table and people were coming across and a, obviously a woman with multiple children uh, came to try to take an apple and was told, you can have three apples. I will give you three apples today. I heard that and pulled that volunteer aside actually and had a conversation um, because that's not hospitality, that's not generosity. That's not, we're all in this together. Um, I will say that we have seen a massive increase going on right now in people that are food insecure. Um, my husband and I can think about the pandemic as, as closing and winding down. Oh, we still got to wear a mask sometimes and those kinds of things. But I will say the economic crisis in food insecurity is, is cranking up. The majority of the pantries that we work with the majority of the food access programs we work with have hit or exceeded the peaks that they hit during the pandemic. So all those images of long lines around blocks and stuff like that, many of those lines are back and they're back and there's no longer massive government funding. Um, there's no longer all of these other support networks that were there are now gone. And so the real economic impact of the pandemic 
is going on right now uh, for those who have been most marginalized. Um, so that's why we are dumping hundreds of thousands of dollars just buying food um, for people and making sure we have mental health professionals embedded in programs. We're putting MSWs, Master of Social Work students, into programs to help deal with the mental health crisis that is going on right now. And at those food insecurity programs, like those are the front lines. Well, I, well, I just so appreciate the kind of holistic approach and the emphasis <laughs> on relationship and just that human connection. I have a priest mentor of mine and he's one of those priests who's like the real deal. You know, some of us are just kind of playing church, but there are those priests that are, that are the real deal, uh, Bob Leopold. And, and he always used to, Say, you know, Zach, there's there's the folks that say, uh, give someone a, a, a fish and they'll eat for a day, teach someone how to fish and they'll eat for a lifetime. But what if we as church were about getting in the boat together and going fishing together and eating together, um, doing ministry in a way that really fosters true relationship and uh, human connection. Um, and, I, and I see uh, so many sparks of that in uh, both of your ministries with Episcopal Charities and Crossroads. Uh, Peter, um, what are folks asking online and how, how might they submit a question if they <coughs> have one? We don't have too much time for questions, so I encourage you, if you have a question, to submit it right now. Um, you can do that using the live chat function on YouTube, the comments function on Facebook, or you can email me, pthompson at stbarts.org. That's P-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N at S-T-B-A-R-T-S dot org. And if you're here at St. Barts in person, my colleague Manny Rodriguez-Leach is down there with question cards, and you can fill one of those out if you so desire. Um, Patrick, there have been a few questions about folks who are curious about the relationship between Episcopal Charities and other organizations within the Episcopal Church, uh, specifically General Convention and Episcopal Relief and Development. Can you give just a little bit of an overview of how you relate to these other parts of the, the church? You, um, there we go. Are we back? Yeah, we can hear there you. We go. So um, that's a great question. Thank you so much. Um, Episcopal Charities is a separate 501c3. So we have our own board, our own 990 you can look up, all those kinds of things. So we're our own board. Um, we only fund projects within the Episcopal Diocese of New York. So that's from Staten Island, Manhattan, the Bronx, and up through uh, Orange, Ulster, and Dutchess counties in the Hudson Valley. Um, we have no canonical uh place. I mean, we're in the canons of the diocese that uh, the bishop sits on our board, um, but we are never told by anyone in the diocese where the money goes or where it shouldn't go. That's at the complete discretion of our advisory committees and our board. Um, so where Episcopal Relief and Development does international work um, and does incredible work internationally, Everything for Episcopal Charities is right here in the Episcopal Diocese of New York. Great. Thank you. Um, Patrick, you talked about $1 million that you got to give away. Can you talk about where that money came from? Uh, is it all individual donations? Uh, is there a big endowment? Uh, and I guess the same question to you, uh, Dave. Uh, where does the money for Crossroads come from? <clears throat> Patrick, you so, so Episcopal Charities, we do not have an endowment. Um, everything that we raise, we raise every year um, that goes out. So the majority comes from $50, $100, $1,000 contributions from people all over um, our area. Um, over the last two years, we've actually gotten uh, a lot of traction with some larger funders. So the Mother Cabrini Health Foundation uh, is going to be helping to do our, our major food programs in 2023 to the tune of 300 plus thousand dollars they've already committed to uh, because they believe in it. Or places like the Westchester Community Foundation, um, Trinity Church Wall Street, the Episcopal Diocese of New York has given us specific grants because these are large organizations that can't get money to a food access program that has no staff and can't apply for a grant, but we can get it to them. So we get uh, contributions from parishes. So St. Bart's, 
supports Episcopal charities, um, as do uh, parishes all over the diocese. So that's a majority of our money comes from right here in the city um, and the Hudson Valley and then stays right here. And for us, uh, we receive federal and uh, state grants. Uh, we receive, uh, of course, school charities, uh, their profi program. Um, and we receive several donations just from uh, many businesses that are located very close to St. Bart's, uh, are quite generous and give us uh, cash donations. Um, and uh, of course, donations from St. Bart's uh, church members and various other people. You know, we get $5 here, $20 here, $1,000 here. It adds up and it helps immensely um, in being able to choose what we can provide for our guests. Well, it's now past 1045. Thank you both for being with us. I'll uh, hand it back over to Zach to close us out. Well, thank you, everyone. This has been such a wonderful conversation. And uh, I just uh, take such delight knowing that with Crossroads, literally in the basement of St. Bart's, our church, our congregation really is built on a foundation of service among the last, the least, and the lost, those uh, with whom Jesus promised to be present in the world. So thank you for giving us some insight into how we can uh, be a part of this wonderful work of God in our community. And I hope that each of you uh, watching online or in the Great Hall uh, will be in touch if you would uh, like to learn more about how you can be involved with either of these uh, wonderful organizations. Uh, so, Peter, do you want to say a word about what's happening next week on the forum? Yeah, next week, uh, Zach and I will be joined virtually. So we have one more virtual forum before we're back uh, in person uh, in September. We'll be joined virtually by leaders of the Anglican Church in Poland and the Anglican Church in Ukraine um, to talk about how the war in Ukraine has affected the work of the church and what the church has done uh, to care for those who have been displaced as part of the war. So a really important conversation next week. Hope you'll join us online or here in person at St. Bart's and hope you'll join us in just a few minutes for worship at 11 a.m. Take care, all. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Dave. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Have a great service. Thank, Thank you. Have a great day.